Hello, everyone. My name is Joe Seckman, AVP of R&D here at Bishop Fox, and joining me today is Caleb Gross, Senior Security Engineer with the Cosmos team at Bishop Fox. Caleb, would you mind taking a moment to introduce yourself? Sure. Hey, Joe. Yeah, I'm Caleb Gross. I lead the Capability Development team at Bishop Fox, where we focus on prototyping new tooling and researching vulnerabilities and working in automation. Okay, excellent. Well, hey, thanks for joining me today. Uh, another day, another CVE. This one, CVE 2022-1388, uh, affecting uh, big IP F5 appliances, was released over the weekend, or I guess an exploit was released. Um, for the uninitiated, uh, would you mind giving us, giving the audience a brief overview of this issue and why it's important? Sure. Yeah. So the nature of this vulnerability is an authentication bypass and F5's big IP device. That's a traffic manager and device that you'll put on your perimeter. Um, and this vulnerability is really notable because it would allow an attacker not only to bypass authentication, but then to in turn execute remote commands on the device. And we've already seen um, some actors not only executing code, but also more recently uh, totally recursively removing all the um, contents on that device. So th th this really matters because um, even though there's typically, it's kind of rare to have the management interface for this device to be exposed over the internet, there's still several thousand devices uh, and we've even found some for Cosmos customers as well. And um, the turnaround for getting a proof of concept exploit out public was just a couple days after the advisory was initially posted by uh, by F5. So okay. certainly one to, to pay attention to. Yeah, definitely. Definitely on a lot of people's minds right now. Um, now, we know that there have been a number of technical deep dives released from security firms around the world, just uh, you know, articulating the exploit, the CVE. So there's a wealth of research already available. Um, what made you and the, and the Cosmos team decide to focus on discovery and the creation of the big IP scanner from Bishop Fox? Yeah, I would say one of our interests, especially in the Cosmos team, is, is taking the perspective of what's on the attack surface in general, and instead of focusing just specifically on the nature of vulnerability to vulnerability or emerging threat to emerging threat, trying to take a wide angle view of what assets do we even have on the attack surface, and can we hone in even on particular versions, which may give us an ability to see not just if we're vulnerable to or affected by one specific issue, but do we just have some old devices that may need to be updated so that they're not vulnerable to whatever the next emerging threat is and keeping tabs on that from a continuous basis. That's, that's what inspired, in this instance, the big IP scanner and also previously things like the Palo Alto Pan OS scanner, kind of a similar idea. Yeah, so it's it's one thing to know about the exploit. The next is, okay, where are they in my environment? And that's kind of where this this big IP scanner comes in. So so let's turn into or let's turn to the big IP scanner itself. Um, how does it work? The idea here is basically two parts. We can do one initial assessment of what are all of the releases of big IP that F5 has released and Thankfully, F5 publishes not just the uh, release names, but also the release dates for most of the big IP releases on their website. So what we were able to do is cross-reference the list of releases with the list of modification dates that we've pulled after installing those releases. So what we're doing is looking at a specific header, which you'll find referenced in detail in the blog post. There's a last modified or e-tag header, which will tell a browser or tell a user in this case, when we run the scanning tool, when was a specific resource, like a logo file, which is what we're paying attention to, last modified on this device. And that gives us some indication of when this software was initially archived and prepared to be released by the vendor. So by cross-referencing last modification dates with public 
versions of big IP, we can create a version table and say, when we see a specific last modification date, and we know that it is this specific release of big IP, and, and that gives us a really uh, reliable way to, to look at an exposed management interface and have some degree of certainty that it's running, say, an updated version of big IP. Excellent. That's kind of sneaky, just comparing. Uh, I guess the underlying assumption is that it was last modified when it was last updated. So then there indeed lies the version for that specific um, piece of, of software that's there. So, wow, that's pretty sneaky. Um, what were some of the challenges that you and the, the Cosmos team encountered when, A, responding to this emerging threat, and then, you know, B, creating the, the big IP scanner itself? Yeah, I would say a couple of things. One is just staying on top of all the information that's surfacing about this emerging threat. And that's not really unique just to big IP. I mean, that really goes for any emerging threat that affects a perimeter device. It's naturally a, a point of interest for a lot of different parties, for offensive security testing firms, also for internal security teams. Uh, for, for this one in particular, I think there was some initial degree of uncertainty. Is this just all big IP devices in general? Is it just the management interface? And then when it comes to signaturing and detecting potentially affected devices, similarly, there's a question of, OK, this device that I'm looking at, is it is it a big IP appliance? Is it a, a management interface or a login page not on the management interface? Is it a an, an application that's passing through a big IP? appliance and dealing with all of those nuances is, a, is something that we had to do in the process of responding and trying to find for our own customers do they have any big ip appliances in the first place and if so which of those are actually exposing management interfaces and how do we cut down on the noise in order to deliver a good signal that is showing my management interfaces and specifically those that have an outdated version of big IP that's going to be vulnerable to this emerging threat. Oh, okay, excellent. So I guess in, in I know that you and the team have been working around the clock with this so since over the weekend. Um, just wondering and curious if you and the Cosmos team have um, any specific metrics or, or any other details regarding the performance of um, either the scanner or just how this vulnerability is is materializing in the wild, any kind of metrics that you can share with our audience? Yeah, I think it would be useful to, to talk about how many management interfaces are actually exposed. You'll see others talking through the similar topic, right? There are a lot of big IP devices, but which of those are actually exposing a, ma a management interface? And I think the most common metric that's getting thrown around is around 2,500 devices just across the whole internet exposing the management interface. But even some of those may be honeypots as well. We're finding similar ratios just among uh, assets that we're scanning for Cosmos customers. So something in the order of several hundred big IP appliances, but a much smaller subset of those actually exposing the management interface, which I think is a positive trend. It, you should not be exposing a management interface <laughs> to the internet. So I, I, th I think that's, that, that's been a, 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 a good observation and, um, and hopefully we'll see that continue uh, and see people not exposing the management interface. Yeah, well, it's definitely going to get some attention now, uh, for sure. Well, Caleb, hey, thanks for joining me today. Really appreciate it. Everyone, please check out the latest blog on Big IP Scanner from Bishop Fox covering this issue. And thank you very much and have a great day. Thanks, Jeff.